paper, what, what got us into this field uh, was an observation that we published in Science in 2010, showing that so beta-hydroxybutyrate, in addition to being a nutrient, as we just discussed, is also a signaling molecule. Mm -hmm. And what we found at that time was that uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is quite similar to butyrate, now, butyrate mm -hmm. is a byproduct of uh, bacterial fermentation mm -hmm. in our gut, actually. Right. And when we eat fibers, these bacteria will uh, digest the fibers into butyrate, and this butyrate actually circulates in many of us as, 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 we, as we live. Um, the um, butyrate was the first known or first identified inhibitor of HDAX, histone deacetylases, which are epigenetic regulators. And so that suggested that maybe beta hydroxybutyrate might be an endogenous regulator of these HDACs. Now, the reason why we were interested in HDACs is because they've been linked to aging as well. Their, uh, Steve Helfand's work has shown that an enzyme called RPD3 in yeast is actually a regulator of the sirtuins, which are themselves regulator of aging. So there's a pathway that's, that's in yeast that's been established, actually in Drosophila as well, uh, linking RPD3 to SIR2 to aging, the aging process. And these HDACs that I'm talking about are in the same pathway. So that got us to start thinking, um, uh, what could beta-hydroxybutyrate be a, also an HDAC inhibitor? And it was. And then this implicated it might actually be able to regulate gene expression. And some of the key targets that we found were uh, enzymes such as FOXO3, Fox, wow. which is uh, a major, uh, sort of transcription factor in humans linked to aging. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that FOXO3 actually controls the response to oxidative stress. Right. So there's another link there that, that you know, brings uh, not only via the pentose phosphate yeah. and ADPH, but beta butyrate actually protects against oxidative stress, uh, as both as a nutrient, but also as a uh, as a transcription or regulator. That's super cool. Do you know what, what levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate are required um, to sort of flip that switch? And So the, and this is probably, it's a very good question. It's probably one of the reasons why no one did the experiment before us. <laughs> it, it, uh, beta-butyrate and beta-hydroxybutyrate are poor inhibitors. They have very low efficiency as HDAC inhibitors. It's in the millimolar concentration. Mm -hmm. And as an inhibitor, nobody wants to work on millimolar uh, inhibitors because it, it's not potent enough. What most people did not realize is that the concentration of, of beta-hydroxybutyrate in your plasma or in your brain during fasting can go in the millimolar yeah. range very quickly. Right. And that's when I was reading a paper discussing these concentrations and was astounded. I thought, well, millimolar concentration, this means that it might really work as an HDAC inhibitor. And so we tested this by uh, putting a pump under the skin of uh, mice with beta-hydroxybutyrate and then measuring histone acetylation throughout the mouse. And we found that histone marks, acetylation marks, were going up, suggesting that there was indeed an inhibition of HDAC. And I think that was the turning point for By us. giving them exogenous beta-hydroxybutyrate. Ex yes, not even the fasting, because the fasting or a ketogenic diet is much more complicated than just giving beta-hydroxybutyrate. Right. And they were, ta they were on a normal chow diet. Normal chow diet, they were not fasted, and we found that uh, their ketone body levels were going very high in the millimolar range, and within a few hours, their histones were becoming hyperacetylated. And so that, for us, uh, uh, I think signified that here's a molecule that is produced during fasting, under conditions that we know are, are good for your health. And so ketogenic diet has, has been indicated, has been shown to have some beneficial effect under, no, no, uh, under a series of circumstances. All of a sudden, this, we had a potential signaling me mechanism, and that's what we've pursued.